a short story of creation, as told by a wondrous man's earthly evolutionary travel into a world of wonderland, by René Nedeau. We find ourselves in an era where no one has much time to read books, so I've made this a short but powerful, often with great tribulation, account of my life's educational journey. I hope my story will successfully demonstrate how I, as well as the reader, from shortly after our arrival on Earth, have been deceived. If you may be looking to determine just how the wool was pulled over all of our eyes, as goes the cliché, be careful what you look for, as you just may find it. This could possibly be the most important story you will ever read at any point in your lifetime. In a world we've been so conditioned to trust and accept, without exception, most, if not all, might believe that this could ever happen to anyone, let alone that it may have unknowingly happened to them. If you decide to begin this ride, I would please ask that you take it all the way to the end. Mind-opening information is inside that your life depends upon, and it's not anything you'd expect. Okay, let's begin this ride into that beautiful sunset on the horizon. Chapter 1. Dreaming in Wonderland I was tucked into my bed on this warm June night, very relaxed, AC on high, with my feet, as most always, resting on a hot water bottle. Anyone who hasn't tried this is truly missing out. It was pretty much a normal night, but for some reason this night, my mind began to wander, reflecting upon what I've learned over my lifetime on Earth, thinking back on just how I had received and processed all that information, attempting to make some sense and purpose of it all as I drifted off into dreamland. As my mind reflected back, I became more relaxed. I recalled that in the beginning, learning, it's theorized, somewhere around 14 billion years ago, the universe was created by a Big Bang event. Apparently, a whole lot of nothing somehow came together, becoming so dense reportedly it could fit on the head of a pin, and with this convergence causing so much pressure or energy that it exploded everything into existence, with a Big Bang creating our ever-expanding and still-evolving universe. There's a TV sitcom called The Big Bang Theory, where I've witnessed a whole lot of nothing coming together, creating this TV program. School educated me that we live on planet Earth, the third planet from the sun, with Earth's age estimated at four billion years old. There's also a TV program sitcom, Third Rock, named for our planet. And that our planet is still forming with its seven continents continuously shifting on tectonic plates, floating on beds of molten rock, with Earth's core believed to be a huge round ball of molten nickel, with oceans created by giant comets impacting the Earth over billions of years, delivering trillions of gallons of water and filling the seas. From as early as I can recall, I took great interest in all history, especially yearning for answers of just how we all came into being. School educated me that dinosaurs reportedly roamed our planet Earth long ago and were believed to have become extinct about 60 million years ago through some kind of cataclysmic catastrophe, possibly a large asteroid colliding with Earth somewhere near the Gulf of Mexico, drastically changing Earth's environment. The resulting climate change then made way for humans to evolve from small warm-blooded mammals or rodents that brought about our closest ancestors, estimated to have appeared about six million years ago, proceeding to evolve into modern humans 200,000 years ago. I recall in science class learning about Charles Darwin, who wrote a book, at that time a very controversial book, in the 1850s, called Origin of Species, where his studies of nature led him to conclude all life had evolved by way of natural selection, adapting and evolving in order to survive in their ever-changing environments, or else become extinct. Through his theory of evolution, Darwin theorized that humans had evolved possibly from one-celled organisms all the way up the evolutionary ladder, taking millions of years, with primates being our most recent ancestors, slowly evolving, and even still evolving, into who we are today. This evolution theory, combined with the Big Bang theory, was instrumental in my now being led to believe man evolved from primates, with the universe created by some kind of random Big Bang event, creating everything. I was raised Catholic, attending church services with my parents each and every Sunday. I would often make extra efforts to pay attention, but never recall anything making any real sense. Also, in not finding any credibility in the Adam and Eve creation story, I was left in search of answers. In the absence of any better explanation, as time passed, all this information assisted me in forming my understanding of the creation of life, leading me to my core beliefs as a devout atheist, 
to the point that if anyone even suggested there's a creator or a god, they were believing in fairy tales. In my early youth, I recall always craving to be informed of world events. With very few black and white TV channels broadcasting, our family religiously watched the six o'clock network news programs. Newspapers and my favorite magazine, National Geographic, were always at my fingertips. The space race was constantly in the news. I recall oftentimes our news networks would report that we couldn't trust Russia's state-controlled news media, highlighting that USA news reporting was unlike foreign news outlets being our news media was free, honest, and truthful. We learned to have faith and trust in our free press, always reporting truth, even if and when U.S. test rockets exploded on their launch pads. I have a memory of being in first grade as the teacher wheeled in a huge black and white TV. Having a TV in school was a big deal, not something I'd ever seen in school before. I still recall my teacher explaining to another teacher just how important it was for our class to witness our first astronaut, John Glenn's historic Cape Canaveral live liftoff, intent on orbiting Earth for the very first time. I recall being eight years old in 1962 watching JFK announce our national goal of landing a man on the moon by the end of the decade. My dad and I would often speculate on just how NASA could accomplish this monumental moon landing feat. By constantly following national nightly news TV programs, we learned ever more details of the plan, including the most important and dangerous NASA outer space capsule dockings. I recall as a child, often looking up in awe at the night sky, wondering what was out there, thinking, we can't be alone, there just has to be life on other planets, and wondering what I couldn't see of this vast and ever-expanding universe above me. On to Chapter 2, More Learning. Chapter 2 Living the dream, more schooling with men walking on the moon. Looking back, some of our first lessons learned were our ABCs and basic math. Also in every classroom, there was a globe where we learned geography and the location of continents, that our Earth orbits the sun while tilted, spinning on its axis, allowing for night, day, and our four seasons. Like most students, we were seated in rows facing the teacher, instructed not to talk with our neighbor and to obey all of the rules. Then, to listen very carefully, and hopefully impress our teacher boss seated at the front of the classroom by demonstrating just how smart we were. Sometimes we even earned stickers or gold stars on quizzes and tests, reinforcing our sense of accomplishment. Now, educated and ready for more learning, we were promoted to the next grades. I recall one of my first history lessons. In 1492, Christopher Columbus sailed the ocean blue. With all educated people of that era knowing they lived on a sphere, it was Christopher Columbus's arduous task, prior to leaving on his New World quest, to convince all of his ignorant crew that it was impossible to fall off Earth's edge, because the Earth was indeed round. As they sailed on for weeks not seeing any land, his crew became restless and worried, but before they threw him overboard and sailed back to Spain, land was spotted. Columbus, believing he'd found India, referred to the natives as Indians. This new world discovery earned him the honor of a holiday, Columbus Day. Fast forward 477 years, man takes his first steps on the moon. The way I recall it, at age 15, presumably the most watched TV program of that era, nearly everyone alive viewed black and white video beamed back live from 287,000 miles. I recall exactly where I was sitting with my dad in utter amazement. Also, now far enough from planet Earth, we were shown an image of our home floating in space as a perfectly round blue sphere laced in white swirling clouds, an absolutely unbelievable epic sight. On subsequent missions, astronauts even hit a golf ball and drove a lunar rover wildly over the moonscape, leaving me with a sense of wonderment, believing anything was now possible. Fast forward again, this time 48 years, to 2016. Much has changed and progressed. I had never in my wildest dreams ever doubted the authenticity of the moon landings. After all, I'd watched them live on TV network news broadcast programs. What often got me thinking was what I hadn't seen. After reportedly having men travel an unbelievable 287,000 miles, apparently with far less computer power than you and I hold in our hands today, even with our vastly improved technology, we still hadn't been back to the moon. Manned space travel had not progressed, but in fact had regressed to reportedly an international space station a mere 200 miles high up in Earth's orbit. 
so after nearly fifty years, man was staying ever closer to Earth, not exploring outer space as you'd reasonably expect progress would dictate. With these moon missions vital to my core foundational beliefs, from Earth to the entire universe, I just wanted the simple truth. Did we in fact go to and land on the moon? True or false? I so wanted it to be true. I finally took the time to extensively research the topic. Though there's considerably more evidence for this story, I've included the following. NASA needs us to believe that all the moon missions traveled safely through deadly Van Allen radiation belts unscathed. In late 2015, NASA posted a video on their official website regarding testing of the new Orion spacecraft reportedly attempting to reach 3,600 miles away from Earth. The NASA engineer went on to surprisingly and proudly explain that this test flight would travel higher up into space than we have ever been before, with Orion's shielding being put to the test to protect delicate electronics and guidance systems, and, more importantly stressing, before they send humans this far up into space. Wasn't this shielding problem solved nearly half a century ago? Or maybe NASA doesn't remember they'd solved this problem, seeing as they've confessed to losing all 14,000 reels of telemetry data, including blueprints and all original videos for all the Apollo missions. So NASA has not just misplaced, but has lost forever all documentation evidence and physical proof of what's been referred to as the greatest accomplishment in all human history. How can something so vital to our national security and history that you'd expect to be stored in the National Air and Space Museum, or even possibly Fort Knox, be lost forever? Well, unless this documentation was intentionally lost, destroyed, or maybe it never even existed at all. As a side note, last fall I witnessed presidential candidate Bernie Sanders in a debate response in order to make a point accentuating the impossible, said, It's like they're going to go to the moon. It just ain't going to happen. Also telling, when viewing astronauts Buzz Aldrin and Neil Armstrong's moon mission interviews, their body language appears not at all consistent with truth-telling. I'm no expert, but I believe I've developed a good feel to know if someone is telling the truth. The bottom line? In the absence of any physical proof, expected space exploration progress, including overwhelming and NASA-admitted obstacles, the only reasonable conclusion is the moon missions were apparently staged Cold War propaganda stunts reported by our trusted news media as actually happening, rumored to have been produced by the famed director of the 1968 movie 2001 A Space Odyssey, the late Stanley Kubrick. If it were at all possible to travel to the moon, after nearly half a century, NASA would surely have a simple HD camera positioned on the moon, aimed back at our Earth, or even moon bases by now, showing planet Earth spinning 24-7 in real time. They could even sell advertising on it. I know I, like many, would have a dedicated screen on constantly for our spinning planet Earth. We've been led to believe we have seen photos of the Earth from space. The opposite truth is, there are no actual photos and or real-time real videos of Earth. Each year, NASA publishes new Earth CGI special effect images, remarkably with the continents drastically changing size and location from year to year. Reasonable expectations suggest oodles of real-time actual videos and selfie photos of planet Earth being available. Again, it's so often what we don't see that's so important to begin finding the truth. If you take the time to look, there's so much more evidence indicating our moon missions were no more than a Hollywood science fiction production. What I found shook the very ground I stand on, and this unprecedented deception is just the tip of the iceberg of revelations to follow. On to the next, extremely cold, Chapter 3. Chapter 3. From the Moon to Antarctica and Beyond. So, now feeling disillusioned and betrayed in discovering our moon missions were all staged but shown live on TV network news programs as actually happening, I began to wonder what else might need to be looked at more closely. Knowing very little about Antarctica, I decided to research it. We've been led to believe Antarctica is a massive frozen continent covered in ice located at the very bottom of our planet Earth of no real interest except for a few scientific outposts. The opposite truth is the apparent reason we don't hear much about Antarctica is because of its very great interest and cordoned off similar to Area 51. 
My research turned up that highly respected explorer Admiral Richard E. Byrd visited Antarctica several times. His last two expeditions were codenamed Operation High Jump in 1946 and Operation Deep Freeze in 1955 and 56, the details of which remain classified. Upon his return in 1956, he happened to do a live television interview, presumably under national security restrictions, and briefly went on to say Antarctica was the last great bastion of untouched natural resources, such as coal, oil, and other valuable elements. He indicated they had discovered a 10,000-foot-high mountain range as well as unexplored land beyond the South Pole, not covered by ice, the size of North America. These discoveries were quite astonishing. Admiral Byrd died at his Beacon Hill, Massachusetts home of a reported heart ailment in 1957, somewhat mysteriously. Antarctic Exploration Reports There are none. No further publicized Antarctic expeditions. Antarctica became restricted to only those with national security clearances. Next, the United Nations Antarctica Treaty, signed June 1961, that won't even come up for discussion until 2040, a treaty no country has ever broken or fought over, making Antarctica off-limits to everyone and patrolled by the UN International Military, keeping out all unauthorized personnel. After schools and media this time became nearly completely silent about Antarctica, including the reported discovery of new land on Earth. I began to wonder more about what they may not be telling us, leading me to begin questioning and researching other information learned in school. What I found shocked me. We have been led to believe. The Earth is a perfectly round blue sphere with water sticking to it, spinning at a thousand miles per hour in orbit around the sun traveling 67,000 miles per hour, with our entire solar system traveling at 500,000 miles per hour around the galaxy, and the entire galaxy hurtling through space, resulting from the ever-expanding Big Bang-created universe. The opposite truth is, better make sure you're sitting down. Shockingly, the Earth is flat and stationary, potentially covered by a solid dome firmament, as described in the Bible. Our flat Earth appears to be surrounded by an ice wall, estimated at 200 feet plus in height, encircling the entire flat Earth plane. I know, I know, that may bring about the question, why hasn't someone just gone over the 200-foot ice wall to take a photo of the dome? Well, because the international military will stop you, thanks to the 1961 UN Antarctic Treaty's no-fly and no-sail zones firmly in place to protect this earthly secret. So before you say what you may be thinking, I know Earth can't be flat. I trust I live on a blue spinning sphere. It has to be true. Why would they lie or hide this? Which is exactly how they've programmed you to react. Stop. Please step back and critically think for a moment. The question isn't, why would they lie? The question is, why would they tell us the truth? If land and knowledge are wealth and power, why would the elites and governments share it with the peon slave masses who they openly state they want to depopulate? One of the hardest, if not the hardest, psychological undertakings anyone will ever attempt in their lifetime is to have an open enough mind to consider new information contrary to their unquestionable beliefs. Then, to become self-aware enough to recognize the need for and the importance of questioning their foundational understandings of the earth. Why? Because this foundational lie is locked into our psyches at the onset of our instinctual childhood thirst for information. You're as sure of where you live on planet Earth, the third rock orbiting the sun as a speck in the vast universe, as where your house is located in your neighborhood, or the nose is on your face. Now in your mind, like I once believed, there's no need to question it. With schools educating us that the Earth is beyond any doubt a spinning blue sphere as determined by geniuses over 500 years ago, along with Christopher Columbus proving Earth as round. Yes, Earth is thought to be round but round like a dinner plate, with a 200-foot-high ice wall holding in the oceans. In essence, we have all unknowingly been made members of a worldwide fundamentalist cult religion, our minds controlled since near birth by the high priests within NASA and media. We are educated into believing this is an unquestionably true fact, more than just about any other fact of life, that our Earth is absolutely, positively a spinning round globe, and, 
trained also to know that anyone questioning this unquestionable truth is a total fool for dismissing the obvious. We've been led to believe when someone breaks with the program they're often referred to as a conspiracy theorist, a code word for those under mind control, triggering the discrediting of anything and everything the person, now a nut job in your mind, may question, suggest, and or uncover that goes against the official programming and story provided by the system. The opposite truth is, we have all been lied to. Please, just for a moment, attempt to put aside all of what you believe you know about Earth. Just for starters, ask yourself these two questions. What proof do I really have that I live on a ball-shaped spinning planet Earth? According to NASA, Earth is spinning at a thousand miles per hour while traveling 67,000 miles per hour, the speed of a bullet, in orbit around the sun and hurling through space at 500,000 miles per hour, all from the Big Bang. Rely upon your senses. NASA tells us we are spinning, but our experience is we feel no movement at all. Do you know when you're spinning or moving? 2. Again, why isn't there a simple HD camera positioned on the moon showing a selfie of planet Earth spinning in real time for all to see after nearly 50 years? Ask your congressman to answer, as God is his or her witness, if we truly went to the moon. See if you get that deer-in-the-headlights look. And why in 2016 there's no HD camera on the moon aimed back at planet Earth? We reportedly have a rover on Mars with a camera sending pictures back to Earth daily of the Mars landscape, when even NASA admits they can't go safely higher than 400 miles into space. I guess we landed on the moon and have this rover on Mars by magic. Also, Earth is reportedly covered by 70% water, always finding its lowest point. There's a reason why the ocean is called sea level and not sea curvature. Imagine yourself on a cruise ship sailing up and down huge hills of water in the middle of the ocean. Imagine a hump of water, hundreds of miles high, between Hawaii and LA. Imagine people in Australia standing upside down in the rain. Imagine rivers flowing uphill. Check out the sun as it heats the tops of the clouds, or when sunbeams shine through them. Does the sun really appear and feel 93 million miles away? Have you ever seen the curvature? I know how hard this is because I once believed and fully trusted I was educated. I had no reason not to believe the earthly facts I was taught by the system were anything but true. I know for sure at one time in my life I'd surely have chuckled at any suggestion by anyone that earth was anything but what you and I were programmed to believe as children. Another thought you may have is, what good does it do to me to know that the earth is flat and not a spinning ball? If you keep reading, you'll find out just how extremely important it is for you to know where you live, and why this secret is so important that it remains a secret. On to Chapter 4, My Mental Illness Identified. Chapter 4, Global Mental Illness. I've recently and proudly been able to self-diagnose one of my mental illnesses, and I'm happy to report with self-therapy I'm on my way to a full recovery. Flat versus Spherical Earth. I believe, is a form of widespread global mental illness contributing to declines in everyone's overall health. As an ordinary, critical-thinking human being, I have come to the conclusion that this mental illness should be identified as Round Earth Taut Anal Retention Disorder Syndrome, or simply RETARDS, as determined by evidence that retarded my own eyes, preventing me from seeing the plain truth on the horizon, victimized by indoctrination experiences that all student inmates have been subjected to. If you feel the urge to dismiss what I've suggested about Earth, please keep in mind that it may be you believing you're so educated, that it is you claiming to know everything, relying solely upon what the system that controls us told us. As indicated in my introduction, most, if not all, may not believe that this could ever happen to anyone, let alone that it unknowingly happened to them. But it surely did. It happened to all of us. You may be shaking your head, thinking that I must have lost my mind. The opposite truth is, I've recently recovered my mind, after unknowingly suffering for decades from full-blown retards, after putting trust back into my own senses and remaining critical thinking skills. Symptoms of full-blown retards may include dumbed-down, indoctrinated consumer debt slave, brainwashed, defending the very system of lies embedded in their minds since near birth that enslaves them, programmed to blindly trust all facts reported from a presumed trusted source as unquestionable truth, 
conditioned to ignore new information suggested by anyone that goes against their programming, even to go so far as ridiculing and ostracizing them. So comfortable and trusting of the system, they are unable to see any reason to seek out the truth about Earth. The bottom line? The retards in recovery is recovering from believing in fairy tales, much akin to a child in denial after finding out their parents were lying about Santa Claus. These early and formative years are crucial stages in understanding just how the world works, but now the child is forced to face the reality that their trusted parents lied to them. It's very traumatic, and not easy at any age when needing to reconsider a once-believed undeniable foundational fact. I recall being in the first and second grades, witnessing children arguing about Santa Claus being real. The children who knew the truth would most always fail to convince others how they were being lied to. The children remaining unconvinced, dependent upon their parents for truth, with unwavering parental trust, would defend their parents and would no way believe those explaining to them their discovery that Santa was fake. Most children, I suspect, when first realizing the truth, were resistant to accepting that they were being lied to by their trusted parents, thinking, why would they lie? You may even recall similar childhood experiences in regards to Santa deceptions. Sadly, the vast majority continuing to suffer from full-blown retards are programmed so completely that they will refuse to even consider attempting to prove to themselves that Earth is truly a round spinning ball, remaining in disbelief as to why schools and media would ever lie to everyone about Earth. Well, for some of the same reasons your parents did regarding Santa, as a means of behavioral mind control, including other irrational motives, with a lie being a lie, no matter what the motive, or how good-intentioned. It's not your fault, as we've all been subjected to many widespread successful psyops in history. On to Chapter 5. Schools Double Down. Chapter 5. Schools Double Down on Destruction of the Nuclear Family. Education is not education, but indoctrination, that has been so artfully administered from near birth to nearly everyone. We are then kept distracted, trusting and dependent, so that in essence we are all bowing down to worship big government and corporations as our God and Savior. Our free public education school system creates an illusion of caring about your children's health and well-being, but in essence continues working towards dismantling the family dynamic. But why, you may ask? That seems crazy. Brief recap. Once everyone is believing we live on a spinning ball shooting through space at near lightning speeds, next is to teach children their existence is a result of a random Big Bang accident created from nothing into something, and by sheer luck over millions of years to evolve into a chimp. A chimp who one day came down from an African tree, learned to walk upright, made tools, lived in caves, then after more evolutionary changes and social tribulation, led us to our human civilization of today. You have been led to believe you are nothing special. After all, your ancestors are mere chimps, owing your very existence to an all-knowing system who medicates, vaccinates, and educates you about living on a spinning ball. The opposite truth is, Earth is of intelligent design, with each and every human an incredibly valuable creation living on a flat Earth plane. Human beings are absorbers of information that becomes a part of us. There's an ancient spiritual truth called samsara, where it's believed that everything you hear, think, say, or do is also stored in your heart, becoming part of your internal makeup. When attending schools, watching TV and movies, videos, and internet, you are absorbing that data into your internal system, similar to a computer hard drive, with everything entering into your heart, especially young children, who are in even more of an absorbing mode, learning what it's like to be a human being. The school system is installing another virus, mental illness, onto your children's hearts. You have been led to believe we are no longer just males and females, but now gender fluid. Now we have little boys and girls questioning if they truly are little boys and girls. The opposite truth is men and women are men and women. You just don't wake up one day looking to explore the opposite gender's sexuality, and now numerous gender identities, to then all grow up to have healthy heterosexual relationships and stable families. Also, using celebrities, you have been led to believe that nearly everyone in Hollywood is implied to be either gay or gender fluid, etc., encouraging exploration of individual sexuality, 
that in order to be a fully functioning human being, you need to explore your feminine side if you're a man, or your masculine side if you're a woman, sending the message that everyone's no longer just a stable heterosexual person, but that we are actually here by luck, living on a spinning globe without boundaries, discipline, duty, or order. The opposite truth is, this socially engineered mental illness is being perpetrated upon your children with the intent of ushering in more chaos to male and female relations and future family formation. By the system teaching, women can be men, and men can be women, with everything equal. Women are duped into not wanting to be bothered with being mothers anymore, and to act more like men. Feminism is not a grassroots movement, but started by the powers that be, the system, in order to brainwash, not to help but to eliminate women, leading women to believe they were oppressed, when in fact the opposite is true, and they were the most privileged class in all of recorded history. Not having to work outside the home, they were able to partake in the most rewarding job of all, raising their children in the safety of suburbs with their husbands having full job security. Now stay-at-home moms raising children are nearly extinct, with others often shaming them into getting jobs. Tricked by the system into believing they were oppressed, these women must now work even harder for a system screwing them out of the natural order of family and life's renewal, in its place working heartless, empty, corporate wage-slave jobs burdened with student loan debt and often raising a child, no longer needing a male role model with the assistance of the system, often finding themselves alone or with cats in place of children and family, believing this was all their own idea. They have no clue what hit them, but will defend the very system that now enslaves them, as their fertility expires, often ending up lonely, highly educated, brainwashed, highly medicated, highly in debt, depressed, expiring cat owners, with litter boxes to clean, duped again that they can do anything, only to find themselves having to do everything, ending up with nothing but cats rubbing against them and dogs humping their legs, sagging, fading tattoos, and a lifetime of rainbows of unnatural hair dye, the likes of scary circus clowns, of blue, green, red, and orange, unattractive to men, and more dates with Ben and Jerry, including Dr. Feelgood, in order to distract them from the reality of failure. With all these created movements of fat acceptance, debt acceptance, STD acceptance, abortion acceptance, birth control acceptance, age acceptance, poor health acceptance, diabetes acceptance, etc., it all boils down to death acceptance. Women are being liberated right out of existence, with the system knowing the way to control anyone's mind is to lead them to believe they're free and liberated when they're not, and thereby reducing the population. Sadly, women are no longer in control of their minds and failing to see the obvious on the horizon. Men are being conditioned that masculinity is no longer a desirable trait, with everyone equal and encouraged to act more like women, trending towards being conditioned to live more of a metrosexual lifestyle even taught by the system and media that they can grow up to be women. In its wake, such men are becoming less and less attractive to women. Women acting like women are increasingly ever more difficult to meet, instead acting more like drag queens, causing increased rejection from men's attempts to meet them. This, along with most of the good-paying manufacturing jobs gone forever that gave men agency, has caused men's instinctual drive to provide and protect to greatly diminish, and for them to no longer have resources and or status to attract a woman. The men that do have resources are in ever greater numbers unwilling to enter into marriage contracts or even relationships with women, as that leaves them vulnerable to financial and emotional destruction. Women are also in ever greater numbers becoming no longer attractive to men, the fat acceptance movement has tricked women that poor health, tattoos, and circus clown appearances is the new sexy, and that it's all men's fault in not finding them attractive. It has been insanely vocalized in media that men should love every inch of an obese woman's unhealthy body. This would be like having a male bum sitting on a street corner holding a sign up attempting to attract women saying, you should love me for every penny I have. Marriage has been made unsafe ground and a recipe for total financial and emotional destruction. No-fault divorce laws have given preference to women in a life's contract, including family courts are most always in favor of women, while enriching lawyers and judges, where on a whim a woman can toss a man out of his own house, have his children taken away, and then be forced to pay child support. Men are conditioned that relationships with women are now to be avoided, with movements encouraging them to just go their own way, the ones that do choose to swim with the sharks, practicing catch and release. Many men now never leave home, 
watching internet porn and playing video games in their parents' basements. Family life is put on hold or never happens, leading to failure to be able to pair bond with women to produce the next generation. This leads to death and failure as a result of both men and women being unable to see the obvious on the horizon. The system is hell-bent on destroying the nuclear family. Increasingly exerting ever more control over a population they intend to greatly reduce by controlling their minds, dividing and conquering us in ways we never saw coming, and we still don't see happening. The U.S. population continues steadily falling below replacement levels, with fertility rates at all-time lows, and single mothers giving birth to 40% of all babies born. Do you hear the system ringing any alarm bells to promote increased birth rates and marriages? No but you may hear champagne bottles popping in the elite circles, celebrating success of peons unknowingly educated, brainwashed, right out of existence. Check the falling fertility rates for yourselves. Better yet, look around you. How many of your children, versions of you, do you see? Any? The intended result? Make men and women less and less attracted to each other. Accelerate the total destruction of two-parent nuclear families' godlike ability to create and nurture new life and healthy family values by example. Socially engineer away a mother's job of teaching children how to love and a father's job of teaching them how to become adults. It is being dismantled in front of our eyes by a system molding children's thoughts and beliefs with insanely confusing messages and foundational lies. On to chapter 6. Schools making us ill. Chapter 6. Schools promote a lifetime of debt making us ill and more. Schools are often criticized for their inadequacies, but on the contrary, schools have achieved remarkable success. Parents, products of the system, are so conditioned that they seek out perceived better schools for their children to help ensure they'll receive even more enhanced mind control conditioning. Illusions of truth, trust, and facts are all built upon the foundation of the globe myth, making way for any misinformation to follow, easily accepted by an unquestioning mind-controlled population. Fully transformed into unquestionably believing everything and anything disseminated from the perceived trusted corporate media source, now instinctually conditioned to dismiss anything contrary to any official story reported in the news media. So even if someone says, hey, that just doesn't look right, did that event really happen? The correct answer always has to be, well of course it did, we saw that reported on a TV news program. What's the matter with you anyway, you moron? Get with the program. Trusting in the system, students are also taught to eagerly go deeply into student loan debt, in bondage for decades, for what they perceive as vital higher education, all in the absence of any guarantee of finding well-paying jobs, oftentimes ending up deeply in debt, working at low-wage jobs as feudal slaves, now with even fewer resources to start families and have children. The consumerism slave graduate learned, like it? You don't just want it, you need it. Go ahead, buy it. Buy it now. Can't afford it? Here's your credit line. Enjoy yourself. Life is short. Have fun. You are all that's important. Now, after being proficiently programmed on how to be a good member of our consumer society, students are led to also believing pharmaceutical medications are the answer to just about anything and everything. Don't worry. If material goods don't make you happy, there's a pill for that. Eat, drink, and be merry. We have a number of pills for that, and some insulin as well. Can't find a job paying a living wage or a husband or wife? We have pills for that. Can't get it up? Man, do we have pills for that. Again, don't worry. You no longer need or want the responsibility and burden of having and raising a family. Explore your sexuality. Today a man, tomorrow a woman. Next day, maybe both. Gender is just a social construct. Choose the public restroom that fits your mindset for today. You only live once. Live for your enjoyment. Take selfies all day. It's all about you. We'll take care of you when you get sick and old. No need for an extended family or any family at all. The system's here just for you. The message? Promoting gluttonous, narcissistic, irrational consumerism, debt, and confused sexuality. Led to believe, to be happy is to be distracted, medicated, and surrounded with material goods, to neither care nor realize you've been rendered a mindless slave. The opposite truth is, now rendered too distracted to even think about the absolute most important, challenging, and fulfilling part of life, creating and nurturing new life back to the earth, your success, your legacy. Result? Any children that happen to be born are destined to become even more controlled by the system. The population continues falling, unknowingly placed under a spell of free public education and media, no longer in control of their own minds, 
unable to see the obvious. They've eliminated you forever by controlling your mind and the minds of your children. They've made it all about you, and it all ends with you. Chapter 6.1 Our Economy Today as We Age Since we manufacture very little here in the USA anymore, something needs to drive our economy. It might as well be health care for ailments resulting from consuming poor and or GMO diets and who knows what else. Under the illusion of health, doctors trained by the system are now looked upon as gods or high priests of the system. They are to provide you a longer life as they proceed to prescribe poison pharmaceuticals and vaccinations that may affect you, who knows how badly, from liver damage, memory loss, to cancer with endless possible side effects, etc. Meanwhile, the food industry, encouraging mass consumption resulting in obesity and being hooked on food that destroys your body's ability to make insulin only to end up with diabetes, knowing the inevitable pharmaceutical gods, mouths are watering, set up to care for all those brainwashed consumers who won't be able to live without them. Similar to a corner drug dealer of the past, there to sell you what you can now no longer live without. The system, again just for you, is searching for cancer cures not for prevention, and knowing in advance there will be an ever-increasing demand keeps cancer treatment centers popping up everywhere to meet the upcoming known demands. Only a society, given all the opportunities and encouragement to make itself ill in every way, needs a massive healthcare system. Again, the system caring about you is an illusion. We are being lied to on a scale that's off the charts. The bottom line is, for their bottom line, and also, to put you through the agony of barbaric treatment with high-priced powerful chemicals for as long as possible before you die. They've even made giving birth unnatural, oftentimes becoming an ever more risky and profitable and ghoulish prospect with C-sections ordered by your trusted doctor becoming ever more common. For those who do live a long life, the end of life oftentimes finds a way to again be unnatural, sedated with pharmaceuticals, starved, and dehydrated to your last struggling death breath. The message, again, don't have children because this is a horrible, painful, meaningless, consumer-driven, debt-burdened life from beginning to end and just not worth it. On to chapter 7, seventh inning stretch, and so much more. Okay. I know there's been oodles of earth-shattering information put forward. Please stand up and stretch. Take a deep breath, because what I'm about to share with you may even be more shocking than learning of our flat earth. Chapter 8. Top of the eighth inning. Batter up. Here's the wind-up and the pitch. I once saw this on a bumper sticker long ago. The brainwashed never wonder. And I didn't exactly know or realize what it meant back then. Believe it or not, and like it or not, as you now know, it has become apparent to me we're all confined here in a totally enclosed biospheric system, planetarium, Earth of unknown size and shape, created by intelligent design. Kind of like, why would schools teach a curriculum of theory of evolution versus creationism? Why not both? Because creationism is not part of the programming, contradicting students' indoctrination of a spinning ball Earth rocketing through space and time. With them, monkeys' uncles, as passengers, now assigned a set destination, with no children of their own ride with them, being when the ride you believe you're spinning on while taking selfies is over, you exit the ride by stepping off, gone from Earth. Next stop, hell. It's similar to misinforming people seated in an amusement park ride, set up and appearing to rapidly spin separately while whirling around at super speeds, even though they experience and feel nothing are told that the ride has actually been underway since they arrived, and they just hadn't realized it. I, like you, was convinced for the better part of my life that this was true. This foundational belief that we all live on a spinning ball earth makes way for our big government god to be worshipped as a false idol, then forced into paying tribute to that very system that keeps us all unknowingly brainwashed. Led to believe, from schools that intelligence rests upon accepting, absorbing, and regurgitating information presented, confirming successful programming installation. So brainwashed, trusting, and dependent upon our educational systems, parents, being products of that same system, eagerly offer up their children's minds for programming shortly after their arrival on Earth. With the message, to resist is not only futile, but insane. The population is harshly punished into submission until accepting the programming one way or the other. The opposite truth is you're left with two choices. You can be true to yourself, ask questions, find real answers and break free from your programming, 
spread the truth about earth far and wide, at the risk of being ostracized, knowing that when attempts to expose the flat earth to programmed controlled minds are made, they'll vehemently resist, programmed so well to know what they think they know as undeniable truth about the earth, moon, stars, and sun, that even if they could question their programming, they're unable to see any benefit for them to do so, because they're perfectly happy in experiencing comfort and contentment while unknowingly on a path to extinction. Or, two, you can be true to yourself, ask questions, find real answers, and break free from your programming, seek out truth and meaning of our existence for yourself only, sharing with a select few that may be ready and or deserving enough to begin to be deprogrammed, knowing that those who walk amongst you are mostly, hopelessly, brainwashed, with many doomed to ultimate life's failure, and living your life, continuing to seek paths to the truth about our Earth and Creator, while being a Creator yourself, by having as many children as you can support, teaching them to rise above all the lies, distractions, and temptations of consumer gluttony. I guess one of the biggest dilemmas is what, when, and how do you tell your children? When and if you hopefully seek out the truth about the very ground we walk on? Do you tell your children all of what they're learning in school is BS, and while attending school to do it in a mode of suspension of disbelief? Do you withdraw them from school to homeschool them, knowing it will not prepare them for the world of deception we live in? Do you advise them to listen even more carefully in absorbing the programming entirely and maybe, just maybe, they can become an astronaut, if they have the right stuff, selected for a possible upcoming mission to Mars, for a starring acting role, playing the part of a pathological liar? Do you flat out tell them the flat out truth about our flat earth, and that they have been under mind control with everything they have been told, have learned and will be taught, are lies intent on keeping them from reproducing? Will they even believe you? That, my friends, is all up to you to handle and figure out. It brings tears to my eyes that life is nothing like we have been led to believe. Those in control of our minds have convinced us that we all live on a painting of a spinning ball. It's been said, the bigger the lie, the easier it is to believe. Sadly, believing the biggest lie ever told in all of human history has resulted in the masses' total loss of control of their mind, body, and spirit, a loss so complete that many will never even realize they have lost it. On to the ninth, final thoughts. Chapter 9. Some final thoughts. Bottom of the ninth inning. Sadly, as I confessed in chapter 1, I was led into becoming a devout atheist, zombie troglodyte, victim of my schooling, indoctrination, reinforced by media, educated with BS, and false earthly facts. Somehow, breaking free from the master programming that stuck just enough, keeping me in the dark for decades, leaving me embarrassed that I didn't question all learned basic earthly facts, I was led to believe sooner. For my entire lifetime, I always considered myself open-minded. But knowing if anyone approached me two years ago and just mentioned the earth might be flat, I would have instantly determined that a retarded moron was in front of me, because I, like you, believed I was educated with all I needed to know and fully able to spot a retarded moron when I saw one. I always attempted to live my life in that extraordinary claims demand extraordinary proof when presented with any claim appearing as wild or outlandish. This strategy served me well in keeping me from believing what wasn't the truth. But I must confess to you right here, right now, flaws and errors in employing this foundational philosophy. For this to work as intended, it needs to be all-inclusive of any and all sources, or it can't be depended upon to serve you. My mind was unknowingly being controlled, just as yours is reading this right now, into trusting our educational system and news media to provide and disseminate truthful information, causing me not to consider what turns out to be the extraordinary claims actually being made about our Earth being a globe, all in the absence of any real proof. You were all wholeheartedly trained into putting blind faith and trust in what we've all been taught, in school and or shown on TV news, just as I was, even above our own senses. But if you like, you can call me a retarded moron for questioning my programming and or for just sharing my discoveries. The opposite truth is, it's you that unknowingly suffer from full-blown retards, that childhood-induced mental illness known as Round Earth Taught Anal Retention Disorder Syndrome, with school systems and media apparently doing even a better job on you than they did on me, trusting, as I did, that the system provided all the true facts needed to be known. As indicated in Chapter 2, my journey began with just needing the truth regarding our moon missions. 
again reported as being the greatest achievement of all humankind, and finding them to be fabricated. Then I discovered the secrecy surrounding Antarctica, and lastly, evidence exceedingly well explained by Eric Dubé's YouTube videos, demonstrating proof positive the utter impossibility that we're living on a perfectly round spinning blue marble hurtling through space. The more you desire and dig for the roots of your very existence and why we find ourselves in this game of life, the more you'll be amazed, being there's much more to this life than we've been led to believe, and sadly this desire is constantly and unknowingly being programmed out of everyone. Big government and news media has even made the word truth politically incorrect. Now anyone no longer under their mind-controlled programming are identified as truthers. Truth is not something anyone should be seeking. As in, get with the program, you moron. Only a moron would question the program's honesty and integrity. There's a notable quote in George Orwell's book, 1984. In a time of universal deceit, telling the truth becomes a revolutionary act. Governments have no fear and no reason to fear any mass awakening due to their overwhelming programming successes. With generations of programming so hardwired, even if a prominent government official happened to appear on live TV announcing the Earth as being truly flat, overwhelmingly the masses would unquestionably know this retarded moron had lost his freaking mind. I've written my story for those with gut feelings that something's wrong, but are unable to put their finger on it, hopefully now intrigued enough to investigate it for themselves. I would hope you'd agree that the only one anyone can truly rely upon and trust is yourself. There's a saying often heard when people are talking with one another. I suspect to ensure that they aren't being led to believe and or left feeling gullible having believed something made up. It's, are you serious? Now that I've shared with you what I've discovered, are you seriously not going to stop and think about it all for a moment? When you are told you are something you're not and you believe it, you are living somewhere you aren't, and you believe it. You are flying, spinning, when you aren't, and you believe it. You can be told anything after, and you will not disbelieve it. Resulting in now believing, you are a monkey's uncle, living on a spinning ball, rocketing through endless space. Sounds crazy, but that's what we've all been led to believe. Those who are educating you with foundational lies have motives for doing so. They are treating you similar to a farmer caring for his livestock, feeding them what he chooses, keeping them content, comfortable, and distracted until they live out their usefulness. Charles Darwin got one thing right. Through his observations, he concluded survival of the fittest as being the key to life, with only the smartest, most healthy, and especially those with the ability to adapt, giving birth to and nurturing the next generation or else experience the cruel reality of unceremonious extinction wiped from the face of the earth. Human survival of the fittest will be only for those who can adapt by discovering the foundational lies we have insultingly been led to believe, first by realizing they are being lied to, then the hows and whys, then adapting and taking steps to begin recovery in coming to realize that we are of intelligent design with true success measured by the unity of a strong family with as many children as you can care for. Wait a second. I think I just woke up. Nope, maybe not. Am I dream writing? Still dreaming? Did I just say the earth is flat? Or is it round? It just has to be. Did we land on the moon? Is Antarctica a continent? Maybe. Hmm. So tired. Groggy. Just my head is spinning, but I'm not. Getting comfortable again on my side. Feet back on my hot water bottle. Thank you for completing my story about a regular guy believing he was educated, attending school, he learned basic earthly facts, including those of the creation of life in the universe. Upon graduating, he experienced a great sense of accomplishment, believing he, along with everyone else, was also now educated. Only as a result of a dream did he later come to realize he truly knew nearly nothing about most everything. He had trusted that our news media would keep everyone honestly informed with real news and other important information, but as time passed, found the opposite had taken place, with countless presumed actual news reports being staged government propaganda, later to end up in history textbooks as actually happening. Ironically, those pulling the strings have scientists building machines that can think critically, AI, while school teachers are programming our children not to think, no intelligence, NI. 
one day soon presumably replaced with manufactured soulless robots allowing for even more control by those in control big government can't be trusted with their greatest fear being a populace of well-informed enlightened strong spiritual souls uniting fearing this unity of all the people on earth will end their power they have over us to control us with lies Again, the powers that be absolutely do not want us peons to have their same level of earthly knowledge. Able to see the big picture, they influence our minds to bring about their desired population reduction. I'll say it again for those who missed it. The system is providing you everything you need while making you comfortable for you to end your own legacy. You may ask, but why? I don't understand why. Well, because you're no longer needed. The progressive and rapidly approaching robot revolution is upon us, making the programmed and now significantly less intelligent human peon obsolete, slowly being programmed to eliminate themselves, in order to save the planet they think they know they live on. Replaced with man-made, soulless AI robots slaving for the elite, much more efficiently controlled surely to surpass human intelligence, and most definitely able to determine whether or not they're spinning on a ball 70,000 miles per hour that humans could never figure out. In the end, only kindness matters, so please be nice to everyone, especially those who dare to begin attempting to unravel years of deceptive programming, hopefully finding a path to the meaning and purpose of their existence, while being creators and nurturers of renewed life, adapting to become one of the ancestors of a human survivor of the fittest, and possible chance for spiritual recycling, living on in some other form. The creator within moved me to share my evolutionary travel into Wonderland with those directed to find it, because you weren't created by accident. I didn't create this by accident. You didn't find this by accident. Until we meet again in my dreams, unless I wake up.